Hey, Andrew McLaren here. Today we're going to be going over balancing a simple reaction. I'm calling them the simple reactions because these are not the half reaction um, ones where it's kind of complicated to balance it out. We're going to be essentially just trying to conserve mass, showing that there's the same matter in the products as the reactants. Um, so to do that, we're, we've got our overview. We're going to go through um, the balancing procedure. So I'm going to go over like the standard procedure, but I want to help you understand that. So to reinforce what we're doing here, we're going to look at some simulations and then we're going to actually draw out these reactions. Um, you, some chemicals can be hard to draw out from their formulas. So it's okay if you can't do that, but conceptually you should be able to understand what I'm, I'm trying to show here because it's just really the procedure um, drawn out and it helps you kind of understand the procedure. There's also a discussion that you can do with a partner. I'd highly recommend doing that, um, talking through that discussion as if this was like a class assignment or something like that. Um, it really, really helps when you're practicing these types of things and um, labeling stuff to confirm that your labels are correct, to make sure that you actually do have an understanding of things like atoms, molecules, compounds, substance, and ions. So we're going to be using those things to help us balance out a reaction. And you should be able to draw out at least the general idea of these, or occasionally be able to draw them out depending on the chemicals that are involved. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so the standard procedure for balancing a reaction is that you basically look at the number of atoms, like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, those are different atoms, and you're going to change the number of molecules, like these numbers in front, like this is carbon dioxide, so you're gonna need to change the number of those molecules for like that given substance. Um, like carbon dioxide, you need to know how many molecules of carbon dioxide you're going to make. And um, yeah, it's there's a, a lot going on here with these vocab words like atom, molecule, substance. So I have a whole video on that and how to label those things in a drawing. And I would highly encourage you to watch that because it conceptually is very important for balancing out a reaction. So if we're looking at our problem solving flowchart, Basically, you need to have an understanding of atoms and molecules to do these things. You need to be able to read a, a, a reaction, like being able to read the formulas in a general sense and know what they, those things represent. And you don't really need too many like calculator skills, but it is a good idea to be able to do a little bit of drawing of these, of these atoms. Um, the only real useful information is what atoms are involved, what compounds or substances are they in, and um, then you gotta balance it out, right? You gotta make sure things are conserved between the two sides. So you gotta be able to organize and keep track of that information a little bit. But if you're able to do that, then you should be able to balance things out through the atoms. So why don't we go ahead and, and try one of these out. So, you typically see these problems start off where they list out the atoms here in the center and you kind of do a little bit of guess and check and you might say okay maybe I have one molecule of this substance and I want to figure out how how much carbon hydrogen and oxygen I now have currently I've only got one carbon because there's only one of these in one molecule but there's two hydrogens in one molecule. And it looks like there's only one oxygen here currently from that. And maybe we do another one here. Um, and then that's going to contribute two oxygens. So this is two plus one. This one is coming from there. This two is coming from there. And so it looks like currently we have three oxygens. Um, now, if I'm looking at this and it says I only have one carbon, carbon's only here on this. So I'm going to try and place it there. And that should mean that I have one carbon and it looks like I've got two oxygens now. And I'm curious if I place in a one here, this might work out because that means there's two hydrogens in one molecule and we only have one molecule here. 
So there's two there. So these came from there. We also get one more oxygen from there. So it looks like in this case, if we have one molecule of each of our um, reactants and products, things balance out. We have the same number of carbon on both sides. Mass has been conserved. The carbon didn't disappear. It didn't just get suddenly created. It's just changed what um, bundle it's in or what molecule it's in. That's kind of how I like to think about these things. So if we look at another problem, be careful because sometimes you'll see problems written kind of like this. These threes and twos, those are called subscripts. They're telling us how many of the ion is in a molecule. So we just gotta be a little bit careful there um, and be aware of how that multiplies out. And conceptually, I'll show how or why that multiplies out later, because I think that's important. And there is no particular order that you really need to go in here. It's just kind of guess and check. And so if we look here, we've got, I mean, I'm kind of looking at these and it's, it is guess and check, but it is informed by um, like common sense or kind of looking forward and thinking ahead. I'm seeing that the NO3 here, there's two of them here and only one of them there. So just from the get go, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be two of these and one of that, and that might work. So if we do that, what do we have? We've got two hydrogens there, because each one of these molecules is only one, but we have two molecules. And then it looks like we've got two nitrogen and six oxygen right there. And if we look here, it looks like we've got one calcium. Um, in this molecule, there's two of these polyatomic ions, so there's two of them here. And we only have one molecule of that. And then it looks like we're going to have six here. And it looks like, yeah, if we just plug in one right there, we've got two hydrogens uh, per molecule. And we've only got one molecule there. And I bet if we just put in a one right there, that satisfies things. Yeah, so that's that's the main idea. So if we, we wanna summarize what we're doing here, we're basically saying, um, you f like first you guess the number of atoms and then that's going to cause you to um, like place in the number of molecules or say the number of molecules, right? So plug in number of molecules. Sorry, I'm getting some lag on this program. That's why my handwriting is looking worse than it usually looks. So you kind of plug in the molecules and um, then you guess and check. Um, and then you, you check. handwriting and I'm gonna have to restart this program <laughs> the next bit all right let's jump on to the next part we're gonna look at two FET simulations to help us understand what we're really doing here when we're balancing out the reaction and these are really nice because they're essentially like a fast way of doing the the drawing method that I'm gonna show you in a little bit so when we have a reaction you can think of it as like a recipe like some ingredients making a product, like uh, reactants and product. And so if we change the number of bread and cheese that we have, you can see that we make different amounts of sandwiches. And here we have a nice balanced reaction. So you can see that we have two pieces of bread on the reactant side and two pieces of bread on the product side. It's been arranged slightly differently, so it's in a new uh, compound, the sandwich, um, but we still have the same amount of stuff. That's the main idea. And we typically also write it with the lowest number, like the um, smallest ratio. 
So yes, you could have four pieces of bread uh, make two sandwiches, but you can also write this out as a two pieces of bread making one sandwich. Um, long story short, we ended up working with like millions of these things anyways. So we're really just interested in the ratio. And so we write the smallest ratio when we're talking about this stuff. You can see also I could have a different reaction, same stuff, but slightly different reaction. And um, I have to balance out the, the matter on the two sides. Like I need to have the same amount of meat on the two sides and same with the cheese. I shouldn't have any leftovers. This simulation does kind of show you when you do have leftovers, but that's not really like a balanced reaction. This is much more like the balanced reaction, which they wrote up on the top. Um, also, the simulation, you should check it out. It's the FET uh, Reactants Products Leftover Sim. Googling it will show you it, but it's kind of fun to play around with this, and I would encourage you to do so. Um, also, check this out. This has got some actual chemicals. So this, this helps us understand what we're kind of doing. So earlier when we were plugging in molecules and checking if the atoms were balanced, this kind of does that already for you. Like we're plugging in our number of molecules. This tells me I've got two hydrogens. Um, and so I need to make sure I, I use all of those hydrogens as water. So if we actually have here, you can see there's four hydrogens there. Atoms, four hydrogen atoms. And then so we've got two molecules of the hydrogen gas, which is this H2. So we've got four hydrogen atoms and we have four hydrogen atoms. We can see that in this. That's essentially what I want you to do when we're drawing things out is to try and just draw out a visual of the molecules and use that to keep track. Same thing with our ammonia here. We can see like, okay, yeah, I need to make this into NH3, this packet or this sandwich. Um, how many of these things do I need to do that? And so here you can see, oh, I've got too much nitrogen, maybe a little bit less nitrogen. Perfect. Now I've got all of my reactants are turned into products with no leftovers. All of the uh, matter has been accounted for on both sides. In other words, we've got the same blue circles on both sides and the same number of white circles on both sides. Same thing here. If you have one of these molecules and two of these molecules, then you'll have, um, in this case, you've got four oxygen atoms, because we had the two oxygen uh, molecules of the oxygen gas, which is O2. And you can see one, two, three, four. We have our four there. So that is something that you want to keep in mind, is that we're basically balancing out the number of atoms, or in this model, it's the circles in our molecular models. This does have games that you can play at different levels. It's, it's kind of fun. I would, I would definitely encourage you to check that out, especially to help you understand what we're doing here. They also have this balancing chemical equations uh, sim, which is really great. And I'll have both of these linked in my video. Oh man, my internet's slow right now. I might have to wait for this to load up. Hold up. Okay, here we go. So basically, when we're balancing out a reaction, another way of looking at this is like a little scale. And so you can show, okay, I've got like different amounts of reactant and product here. This is kind of me guessing and checking. I've plugged in my different number of molecules, the coefficient in the front, and I can see, hey, um, I've got too much nitrogen here. I'm going to need a little bit more nitrogen there. Okay, so my nitrogen on my products and reactants side are balanced now, but I've got too much hydrogen at, on the product side, not enough on the reactant side, so I need to increase this number here. And hey, look, now that's nice and balanced. All of my hydrogens are accounted for on both sides, same with the nitrogen. So this is a, another way of visualizing what we were just kind of looking at there, trying to balance out the reactions by balancing out the, uh, the amount of mass or matter that we have on both sides. Because mass should be conserved. Yeah, like this is way too much oxygen. We need more oxygen on this side. Okay, I think I need a little bit more hydrogen on that side. So that's one way of thinking through balancing out reactions is to just do a nice little visual like this. And that's essentially what I'm trying to show you today with the drawing method as well. 
So you can see here the carbons, there's one carbon on both sides. It looks like we've got three oxygens and two here. So we've got more oxygen on this side than we have on this side. So we need to have more oxygen maybe? No, that's, that's a little bit too much oxygen, but I bet if we do that, yep, yeah, there we go. Now I've got the right amount of oxygen on both sides. So it's a little bit of guess and check. You know, you gotta kind of play around with these um, based off of like informed decisions. Like, okay, if I change this, how's that gonna change that? And trying to choose ones that are easier to work with than, than the harder ones. So yeah, those simulations are pretty good, right? All right, so let's draw out these reactions because this helps you understand the standard procedure. Though this might be kind of tricky with some problems because you might not know how to draw out that particular molecule or compound that's involved. Um, in general, you should be thinking through the, these problems, kind of visualizing this at least in your head, if not on paper. So if we look back um, at one of the problems that we bounced right at the beginning in the, um, the very first problem, I believe, this is it drawn out. You can see when you have one of each of these uh, these substances that it is fully balanced out. Also keep in mind that if it's blank in front, we're assuming that there's a one there. That's just a common assumption <laughs> when we have these written out. Like you don't have to go in and write out like, oh, there's one of this and one of that. Like you don't have to label them quite like that. But you can see like, okay, I've got my one, two hydrogens. I've got my one, two hydrogens. I've got my, what is that? Three oxygens, one, two, three on the this side. And then I've got one, two, three on that side as well. And then I've got my one carbon on both sides as well there. So that's the main idea is that we can visually keep track of these things like you would um, by writing the numbers out. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to see how the grouping kind of works and why we're working through the atoms. Okay. Okay, so if we're looking at this problem, we have sulfur and oxygen that are reacting and we get this uh, chemical which has one sulfur and one oxygen in it. And so if I were to just kind of guess and check and say that I've got one of these, that's not going to work because I actually already have two of them. So I need to have the number in front here be two because I should have two of these if I've got two of those molecules. Um, in other words, it looks like we also have two oxygen, but in this molecule, there's two oxygens already, so we only need one of the molecules. And that should give us two atoms of oxygen. So this is the, the general idea, remember? But if we wanted to visualize this, we've got a sulfur, another sulfur. They're two separate things, they're not attached. Um, we do have some oxygen that's attached to another oxygen, um, something kind of like that. So we've got our two oxygens, they're attached to each other, and this is reacting, and we're getting our SO. This is some sort of chemical that's being formed. And so it looks something like this. Uh, it's okay if you don't have a double bond, that's not not what we're focusing on. We're just keeping account of the number of atoms. So you can see, okay, I've got two S's and I've got two S's. Um, and so actually I need to change this number, don't I? This should be a two. So we've got two of our S's, our sulfur, two of those atoms, and we've got two oxygen atoms as well, right? That two right there. And then we've got two oxygen atoms here. There's two of them. Each one is in a different molecule. That's why it's important to write S and O together. That's one of the main things I want you to get across from what we're doing here is kind of like, how does the coefficient turn into molecules? And the subscripts, how do those turn into the number of atoms inside of a molecule? That should, that should be your focus for today. 
So if we're looking at this reaction, let's say we've got hydrogen and oxygen, like in water, and that reacts into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. If I plug in one right here, I've got two hydrogens and one oxygen, because there's two of these per molecule. There's only one molecule. Um, and so if I wanted to do this, I could have something kind of like this, but then I have this issue where I can't make a single oxygen atom, seeing how the gas, there's two atoms per molecule. So if I plug this in, that makes this two, which means I have to have this be two, which means I should have this be two, which means now this needs to be four, because now I've got four hydrogens, and that means I need to have four of them right here. So this you can think of as you've got your water, something kind of like that. And I'm not going to draw circles around the letters this time. It just makes it a little bit faster. We've got two of those. And that's reacting. And it's going to give us um, hydrogen gas, where we've got just attached like that. And we've got our oxygen gas as well. And you can kind of see that I need to change some stuff over here, right? Because I don't have one of this molecule and one of that molecule. I should have two of these. So you should be pausing for a second and thinking, well, how do I show that in the, in the reaction, right? Because now I've got two oxygens and I've got four hydrogens and it's been accounted for. And it looks like I need to double this up. So the, this is a two and that would work. So now I've got two sets, right? Because I had two sets there um, for every one of, of this molecule in a sense. So you just got to be a little bit careful with those. And yeah, we've got two more that will go through kind of like this. So if we have, oh man, this one's, this one's going to be a fun one. This is when things start to get to be a little bit more interesting. So it looks like if I wanted to start this, I'm not going to start with the oxygen because the oxygen is going to be kind of tricky. You've probably kind of seen that a few times now. So if I plug in one there, one molecule of this is only going to have one nitrogen atom. And then we want to have only one nitrogen atom in our product side as well. That seems to be working out so far. Um, but this is going to cause some issues. I'm just seeing the hydrogen and the, and the hydrogen here. I'm thinking I want to have six on both sides, maybe. And to do that, I'm going to need to double that up. We've got two there, and that means that this is also going to be two. And then this should also be two, and same with that. I'm just going to hack my way through that. <laughs> right. Okay, so now I've got a good amount of hydrogens here. I think I'm going to need to have this be three to give us the six hydrogens. Um, we do have the two nitrogens as well there. Okay, so I'm looking at this. And oxygen, it looks like there's, what, four coming from that first number and then three coming from that second. See, this has got to be an issue for us because we can't get an odd number there. Because, yeah, I could say seven oxygen atoms, but I'm going to not be able to make seven oxygen atoms because they're going to be groups of two, right? So I'm probably going to need to double all these numbers. So I'm just looking back at this. This should all be doubled, basically. So this was three, so it should be six. This was two, so it should be four. And this was two, so it should be four. And then I believe that tweaks these numbers by doubling them up as well. So we've got 
or four nitrogen on both sides. And it looks like now there's 12 of the hydrogen and 12 of the hydrogen there as well. Okay. And it looks like we have, what is this? Four times two, that's eight plus another six. Yes, we can do that. So eight plus six, that's what, 14? And so to get 14 oxygen atoms, we're going to need to have seven of these. So if we're thinking through this as a problem, what we're basically saying is I have, um, I'm going to do this down here, an H3. I'm going to have four of those. And I'm going to be adding O2 to that. And I'm going to need seven of those. That's four. That's five, six, seven. Okay, so we've got that. That's all of our reactants. And what we're doing here is we're making NO2. Again, I know that these are not super accurate models of the molecules because I should be playing like doubles, double bonds and showing their electron configurations and all that stuff, but we're not really worried so much about that. We got, what is that, four of these guys? And then we've got our H2O. Because, yeah, scientists, we like to kind of typically show like bond angles and our stuff here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that should be good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So you can see there's a lot of oxygens on both sides. But here, if we're just looking at the hydrogens, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've got our 12 hydrogens on one side. And then we've got our 12 hydrogens on the other. I could count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got our hydrogens, the same amount of atoms on both sides. And um, you can see that there's four nitrogens there. There's four nitrogens there. That's pretty easy to see. And then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 oxygens, and um, we can keep that into account here. There's four, what's that, eight, um, 10, and then another 14, or another four to get 14. So yeah, that is fully balanced, and you can see that with the number of atoms, like oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, in this problem here. And we got another one, and another one, <laughs> and another one right? They never stop. Weirdly enough, this is where I'm the happiest, like in life, <laughs> doing chemistry problems. Trust me, when you get to a certain point in life, this is re relaxing. Okay, so if we plugged in, I think that we're going to have just one of these. And that's going to give us two carbons and four hydrogens. And then we'll get... Um, what is this going to be? We're going to need two of these here. So that's going to be two there. And we get four hydrogens there as well. Or no, we're going to, hold on, we're not there yet. We've got one, two, three, four, four oxygens here. Okay. Um, I think then if we just do two of those, that will give us the four there but that's not quite right because we also have this oxygen um, coming in here. So we want was this four hydrogens. To get the four hydrogens, we needed two of these. So this is actually four plus another two because we had the two sets of oxygen there. Um, there's two of those sets or, you know, there's four oxygens and then there's another two coming in from here. So this should also be uh, six, I believe. 
So if we keep that into account, this should be a six. And then this, I believe, would be then a three for our balanced reaction. So that, and then we can draw this out and show it. Oh no, things getting kind of laggy. <laughs> Don't do it, man. Okay. I've been having some issues with this being a little bit laggy on, on me today. It's been fine for the most part. It's just today. So we've got one of these, and then we're going to have three oxygens, mo um, mo molecules of the gas, I should say. It looks like we've got six of the atoms. And this is reacting. Let me just scroll down a little bit so we don't see that water. Uh, this is reacting. We form two CO2s. Again, the exact arrangement is not super critical for this. We're just kind of trying to show the number of atoms here. And then we're going to have, what is that, two water molecules as well. And I think we got two of those. And that should be keeping a, a track of everything. So we've got two of our carbons. We've got four of our oxygens on both sides. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six. And then we've got our six right there. So that is fully balanced. Um, there's one other situation that you got to be kind of careful of. And that's when we have polyatomics. And this is where it really helps to draw this out. So I will go through the problem, but I want you to really focus on what we're doing with this polyatomic while we're going through it, okay? Because it's it's kind of interesting. I might pause and see if I can get this faster. Okay, so this problem, we have a lot of different atoms going on here. We've got lead, which is PB. We've got nitrogen. We've got oxygen. We've got sodium and chlorine. It's a lot, right? There's a whole lot of different things that we're trying to keep track of. The, it just starts the same as always, guess and check. <laughs> um, but I would take into note that this, there's two of them here and only one of them there. So that gives me a hint that I'm probably going to need two of these for every one of those. So I'm just going to start with that as a guess and see if that kind of works out. So if we do that, we have, it looks like, two of the sodium. We've got two nitrogen and six oxygen. So that we've gotten all from that information right there. And then here, it looks like we've got just one of these. What is that? Two nitrogens. So in one molecule of this, there's two of this ion, this polyatomic ion. And so you're going to have two nitrogens in one molecule as well. Um, yeah, I know it's a lot to keep track of. I'll try and explain that with the picture as well. And you'll see why I like to like to make it super clear. So this looks to me like this is starting out pretty good so far. I'm going to plug in two right there. And it looks like if we plug in one right there, that balances out. So this is not that long of a problem to solve for if you do it in the right order, as you saw there. And it's all about looking for where things need to be doubled and kind of working off that. This is also kind of weird to try and visualize because these are ions. They're not really like compounds. So we've got our PB, and that is going to be interacting with these NO3s. In reality, this has got like a plus two charge, and this has a minus charge on it, a minus one charge. So we've got, I'm just going to um, kind of draw it like that. We've got these charged things. They typically are going to be interacting with each other. So we've got two of these for every one of that. Then we also have our sodium. So this is something that's charged with a plus one typically and chlorine is charged with a minus one typically. And you can kind of see that if we have them paired up, they can kind of be interacting with each other. And this is kind of interacting 
with that. And this is kind of interacting with that as well. But I'm going to need two of these for every one of those stats. So you can think of this as like, OK, this isn't really a molecule, but I'm going to need twice as much sodium as I had um, lead. So I need to represent that in the balanced out equation as well. Although they're not strictly molecules, you can still look at their relative ratios of each other and say that this is the uh, lowest common, uh, or not lowest common, this is the ratio in its lowest form, if it's the smallest numbers. So we have one of these, okay? And you can kind of see the six oxygens there as it's drawn, and you can see the two nitrogens there and the two sodiums and the two chlorines. Now, if we think about our products, we've got our the PB, which is plus two, or two plus, I should say, for its charge. And then we've got, um, what is this, the chlorines now. Each one of these had a minus one on their charge. So we have two chlorines, which both have minus one. So it seems fair that this is going to interact with two of these. Like the one of these will interact with two of these. And that, that seems to me like a decent ratio. And then we're going to have our um, sodium and our nitrate. So this is that NO3. Actually, I'm just going to read. I'm going to use my nitrates that I drew earlier because of technology being my friend. <laughs> um, basically, there should be two of these, I think. It's one there. I'll do one there. Or actually, no, I, I'm... I think I might be kind of messing this up. No, there's two sets of these. So this is one set, and this is another set in our product side. So you can see there's six oxygens, two sodiums, um, two nitrogens, and one lead on the product side. Now, typically, when we do these types of problems, uh, something's going to form in as a solid. So like maybe lead chlorine this actually does form a compound that's a solid or maybe it's the sodium nitrate that actually forms something that's a solid so these would actually be bound to each other we don't need to draw that in the main idea is that you should be keeping track of these ions that are in polyatomic ions and multiplying them as a is appropriate it's just uh kind of hard to visualize <laughs> but it helps. So this discussion prompt will really help you understand a balanced reaction and kind of like what it's representing. I had my students try and balance out some reactions and then rank out uh, some of the student work. Like I picked some student examples and I wanted them to tell me what's the best to worst. So you should take this as a opportunity to talk to someone about this. So look at slide a this is almost right but it's kind of weird some of the stuff that they did b c d and e so that's for the first question you should be ranking out them from best to worst and explaining why you think they're good and i would all if you haven't got anyone to talk to about this you can also do this offline by um, going onto the comments or online <laughs> by going into the comments section and ranking them out. So question one, which one do you think is best to worst? And why do you, why did you pick that order? And then same thing, this is going to be question two, which ones, how would you rank these from best to worst? And why would you put them in that order? So we've got A, B, C and D. And yeah, this is honestly from this discussion, there was more teaching going on than with me directly instructing because kids 
uh, and other students can really point out common things that people are doing and slight differences very, very well. And so it's, it's kind of interesting, the mistakes. So I'd encourage you to try out doing a discussion about those models, which ones were correct, which ones were kind of close, and which ones were totally way off, and why, because you got to talk about why. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go through two practice problems. There's a lot more problems earlier if you look in the drawing to balance a reaction section. So if you're looking for more practice, check that out there, OK? But I'm going to be showing out the drawing method as well as the simplified, easy, traditional method that people usually learn, OK? So if we're looking here, we're balancing out our carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, I I'm going to actually rewrite this because be careful when you see problems that are written this way. These should be subscripts. It gets a little bit confusing because we've got CO2 here plus H2O. It's important to keep in mind that these are the number of atoms in one molecule, right? So just make sure you're following those conventions while you're writing them out as well. You're doing these subscripts as little numbers next to the uh, the atom. Okay, so if we look at this uh, in terms of guessing, what I would do is I'd start here because this is a bigger molecule, and it's got some stuff that's just only there, like carbon's only present there. So if I said you've got one of these, I've got six carbons, and it looks like. 12 um, hydrogens. We do have six oxygens, but there's some other amount coming from there. So it's kind of hard to say for oxygen for now. But we can say that we should have six carbons here, which means we have to have six of these molecules because there's only one carbon per molecule. And then there's two hydrogens per molecule. So I think we need 12 atoms of hydrogen to get those 12 atoms of hydrogen we need six of these molecules of the substance uh, H2O, which is water. Um, then if we look at this, we can determine the amount of oxygens here because we have it in both of these compounds. So we've got, what is that? Six times two, so that's 12 plus another six. So there should be a total of 18 here coming from these two different numbers. And so I think we need, was this another 12? equal 18. So we had our 6 coming from there. We need 12 to come from here. So it needs to be 6 right there. So that balance is a nice balanced reaction. Let's go ahead and draw out what this looks like, though. So we've got our CO2, and we've got to have 6 of those. I know they should be double bonded, but don't worry so much about that. Got six of that. And it looks like we need six H2O as well. So we've got our hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's all of our reactants, and that reacts to form. Yeah, this is kind of messy. We don't have to draw this out exactly right. But there should be six carbons. I'm actually going to kind of on purpose do this wrong just to keep track of, of things nice and neat. So we've got a lot of hydrogens around here. <laughs> Again, this does not need to be accurate. Um, I think we need, what is it, six oxygens, I think. I need some oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. We need each one of these to have a hydrogen off of it as well. Again, this is probably not what it looks like. Organic chemistry professors would be very mad at me for drawing this this way. <laughs> um, but this has all of our hydrogens on it, I believe now. It's five, five, and then, yeah. Yep, that has all of the hydrogens on it. 
So we've got a whole lot in there, and this is one giant molecule, and then we've got a bunch of O2s, a bunch of oxygens attached to each other. I think there was six there. Okay, we'll do something like that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got, yeah, six of these, which is 12 total there on that side, plus another six. So that gives us the 18 for the oxygen on that side. You can see we've got, what's that? Six, 12, and then 18 oxygens on that side. So you can kind of see the, the oxygens on both sides. You can see there's six carbons, and I believe, oh, did I miss one of my carbons? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think I missed one of my carbons. Whoops. <laughs> in any case, though, we have all of our carbons in that one molecule, and we have should have 12 hydrogens. Yeah. So that's that's the main idea here with these guys. Because we're trying to balance out the things on the two sides there. I did a small mistake in, in drawing out my, my formula though. Okay, this one's gonna get interesting. This will probably take a while too. <laughs> um so I'm gonna just rewrite this because this should be a little too and I've got the SO4. That four is little or for the oxygen indicating that there's four of these oxygens and one of these ions. And there's three of those ions here for every two of these ions. Yeah, I know. It gets a lot. So we've got KOH. This is also a polyatomic anion. It's got minus one charge, the OH. You can kind of see that here. It's got the negative charge compared to this having the positive charge. So we've got two, so four plus this right here. This is where I think a lot of students, they turn their brain off and they start trying to just balance the numbers. And you'll see that not only is that kind of tricky here, but it really helps to just double check with um, some common sense knowing what we know now. So when I look at this, the first thing that I notice is that I've got two irons here. I've only got one there. And I've got a ton of these sulfates here and not many of them there, right? So I think what I wanna do is say, I need to have three of these. If I have I make this be three, then there's six of this. We don't really know about the oxygen yet, but we can say the sulfur, that there's gonna be three of those. And that looks to be kind of working out with that right there. And then what is that? Two of these, two irons. Oxygen is kind of hard to say for now because it's in multiple things on both sides. So I'm going to wait on that for a little bit now. So if I have two irons, I think that doubles this up, right? So I've got two there. Now I should be able to say the number of oxygens on this side. I have, what is that? Four times three, that's 12. That 12 came from here, four. And there's three sets of those. Okay, and then we've got, what is that? One, two, three times two, that's six. Six oxygens being contributed there, so there should be a total of 18. And then the hydrogens, it looks like there's um, three times two, so there's six there as well. Okay, I believe doing that balances out, but let's just double check. Three times four, that's 12. And then we've got another six there. That looks good. And we've got our six for potassium and six for 
hydrogen. Okay, so that is balanced out, it looks like, at this point. Let's draw it out to kind of think about what's going on with how I did that math so easily in my head. <laughs> um, so we started off, it looks like we have two of these iron ions. And then we also have three of these sulfate ions, so these SO4s. And so we've got, what is this, four, four of these? Oh, that was kind of weird. So we've got these things, they're all kind of interacting with each other. But it looks like this is also kind of interacting. So it's like they're going to form some sort of pattern where there's two of these interacting um, for every uh, three of these, actually not four of them. So I drew in an, an extra one there. Okay, so we've got those all interacting. Then we also have these um, potassium hydroxide. Yeah, it's okay if you drew this as, as attached, but this actually is a charged particle. This is a plus one, and these have minus one charges on them. So just something to keep in mind. We've got six of these, though. Four, five, and six. All right, so that's all of our reactants. And that reacts to form um, something where we have, oh, I have some stuff over here. I think that that may be old. <laughs> yeah, that might be actually what we're trying to draw. I, I have done this previously and there was some technical difficulties. So it looks like here we've got, we're gonna have a sulfate so I'll just take one of these sulfates. And for each one of these, there's gonna be two potassiums. Oh, these guys, there's gonna be two of them. And we have three sets of that. So we've got, this is kind of like one, two, and three. Because we had three molecules, you can think of that as three sets. And in each one, there's one sulfate and there's two potassiums. I think this is sulfate, right? Sulfate is what has the sulfur and the oxygen in there, I believe. And then if we look at the side here, there's going to be uh, two sets where there's one iron and three hydroxides. So there's two sets. This is one of those sets, or you can think of it as the molecule. And this is another one. And it, within each one, there's three set OH or hydroxide ions and one iron ion. So this is balanced. We've got our two irons here got two irons there. We've got six hydroxide ions, the OH. It looks like we've got six of the hydroxide ions there. We've got um, six of the potassium, the Ks. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six of them there. And the sulfur is kind of grouped up a little bit differently. Here, it was like we only have one molecule, but in, within that one molecule, there's three of them. And then in our product side, there was three of those molecules, right? There's three sets, but each one had one. So it does kind of balance out like that, if you think about it that way. One side note, instead of doing all these atoms, you can do this with polyatomic ions in the center, but only if it's not broken up. If it gets split up into the different atoms, then you're gonna have to um, work with the different atoms. But you could think about this as like, you could just replace that with some other variable like A or X or something and kind of work with that. And same with the hydroxide. 
that would in theory work out for this particular problem because the hydroxide stays hydroxide and the sulfate stays sulfate okay i think that's everything though thank you for joining me this has been mr mclaren thank you for mclearning with me i've got a few more offers that i'd like to let you know about and remember like and subscribe for each video on youtube I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wyzant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon, and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.